You're watching Playbook, brought to you by Scooty, the game rewards platform. What's up, guys? Carly Gwen. I am super excited to have a guest with me today. I I'm like fangirling a little bit. I have Tomato with me from Sound of Urchin. Yo, How's it going? What's up? How you doing? Oh my God, doing amazing. <laughs> so excited to have you today. So at first I was like, hold on, I need to make sure that Tomato still has his signature hairstyle because I feel like that's what's going to bond us because <laughs> <laughs> I get like recognized and asked about my hair all the time. So do people like still come up to you and feel like that's like such a unique hairstyle? Oh, no, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it developed over time and it's me. You can't see it all under the headphones, you know, but uh, you know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's me. It's you. It's me. Yeah, I'm the only your, one. That's your identifier. <laughs> yeah, it's super awesome. I mean, I mean, Guy Fieri maybe tries to kind of do my thing, but nah, he doesn't, at no way does it compare. Not at all. <laughs> all right, awesome. So, I mean, honestly, you could be like a one-man band. I feel like you play like all these instruments, you sing. So, like, what came first? Can you, like, walk us through, like, how you even got involved in, like, playing music? Yeah, well, I mean, I've been drumming. I'm a drummer, first and foremost, so uh, I always tell people, you know, when I say, what do you do? I say, I play the drums. And then I forget the fact that, like, you know, in my band, I write the songs and I sing and, you know, play guitar and play keyboards and bass and everything else. Um, but, uh, yeah, when I was a little kid, I was just playing drums. I was hitting on everything, uh, the pots and pans, the stairs, running up the <laughs> stairs, and... Um, I thought I was going to, you know, like get into a band. I thought I was going to like eventually get into my Led Zeppelin or my, you know, like, you know, sure. I was like, oh, you know, and then when I came of age, then, you know, it was obviously a whole different world. Um, and I was in bands and I'm like, oh, no, this isn't this isn't working. I can't just be behind the drum set. And so I, I started really focusing on uh, my own music and you know, from touring in bands and just being the drummer, uh, eventually just, you know, became Sound of Urchin and people started liking it. I was like, oh, I should have done this from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> from the jump, yeah. Yeah. Um, what were some of your favorite bands growing up? Oh, I mean, you know, Led Zeppelin, Kiss, and then I moved on to, you know, like metal and goth and new wave and, you know, like every, I love, I love good music. Yes, same. Yeah, what I don't like bad music. <laughs> Who's got the time? Um, yeah, there's good and bad music. I mean, it's, you course. know, it should be obvious to people. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your favorite metal bands? Oh, uh, Slayer. Nice. Slayer classic. number one. Sure. Um, of course, yeah. I just saw Anthrax a couple of weeks ago at Coney Island. Love I it. saw Rammstein last week at, in the stadium, MetLife yes. Stadium, and that mm -hmm. was insane. Yep. I uh, heard there's some sick pyro at that tour. Oh, I was terrified the whole yeah. time. <laughs> And I'm a rocker, and I've toured, and you know, for for years and years, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like, oh my god, this is like the most unnerving concert I've ever been to. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was gonna be like fun, and and we'll dance. It'll be crazy, of you know, you know. But uh, there wasn't much dancing going on. No. Um. Did your eyebrows get like blown off by all the fire? Well, that's the whole thing. It's it seemed like they were gonna blow up. It, it seemed like that was gonna be their last concert ever, and they were gonna mm -hmm. take us with them. Right. You know, like, you know, I've seen Ministry and Marilyn Manson. Oh, I've seen yeah. a bunch of those bands. and You know, they're not scary. Like, Rammstein was scary. Right. You know? You're, like, a little scared for your life. But what what the heck is the point of a metal concert if you're not scared for your True. life? True. Right? It's good to be scared in 2022. Yes, definitely. <laughs> by, by metal. Yes. So um, how did you get linked up with the other guys in Sound of Urchin? Like, where are you guys from? Or, like... How did how did you guys kind of find each other? Well, I mean that's that's the other thing. Everything again. I was I was in all these other bands as a drummer and touring with them and doing things with them. And on the side, the Sound of Urchin was just like these friends of mine, and we just all everything was like really organic. I mean, it, it's hard to say that these days because everyone says that things are organic, but this yeah. was really organic, and it happened like that on the side, and then automatically people liked it. Um, and we were, we were friends with the band Ween, and so it, they kind of took us under their wing, okay. and they offered us our first show, a uh, big show, and it was New Year's Eve in Manhattan at, uh, uh, I forget what the place was called, but, uh, and it was sold out, and we're like, oh my God, this is going to be insane. Yeah. So, okay, here we go. 
And like, that's just, that was it. It was, you know, we just went from there. That but yeah, all of our friends, yeah. anybody that joined the band kind of came from our circles. Um, we all play in the Ween offshoots, so it's, it's all kind of in the family. But even though I'm from Brooklyn and the band is based in Brooklyn, we're really based in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Like, that's oh, where no everybody, way. that's where, where the scene, the musical scene was, you know? Yep. You know, a lot of musicians there, a lot of great musicians. That's so cool. Yeah. That's like a unique place, it's, too, right? It's halfway between Philly and New York. Yep. And you can't get there by train from, you know, from New York or train from <laughs> Philly. <Yep. laughs> so it's this, this little, like, it's real vibey, real vibey yeah, there. definitely. Yeah, it's a cool spot. Yeah, um, it's always playing there. So where did the name Tomato come from? <laughs> because you don't have red hair, so it's no. not like, you know, something like gingery. Like, where? yeah, where did that come from? I don't really care too much for, <laughs> for the actual tomatoes okay. them, them themselves. Like, you know, they're whatever, you know, they're on the burger or whatever. Sure. But um, <laughs> what's the funny thing is, is under Wikipedia, I'm under the actual tomato. So, if, like, if you put in tomato, there's... <laughs> Tomato, there's, you know, of course, the fruit vegetable gets sure. the main page. Right. But then there's tomato disambiguation. And that there's, like, you. tomato uh, software. And there's tomato musician. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm kind of proud of that. But, yeah. all right. I mean, I've answered this question so many times. Of but course. No, no. I mean, usually I just make up something. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was my AOL screen name, like, way back in the day. You're watching Playbook, brought to you by Scooty, the game rewards platform. You have your nickname, you have Sound of Urchin, like ready to go. And what's kind of the next step in like the progression of the band? Like, do you guys go for like a label? Do you keep playing, like trying to do bigger shows? Like kind of what happens next? Yeah, I mean, it all kind of happened real quick because uh, we started out, you know, again, opening up for Ween um, and you know, getting thrown right into the fire of uh, playing in front of sold out crowds that really didn't want to see us. Um, and then they liked us. And, you know, being that we were friends with them, again, they took us under their wing. Uh, within a few months, we got signed by uh, RCA Records, which was a big label at the time. I'm not sure what it is now. But, um, you know, uh, which was amazing. And we just... They just put us on tour. We started opening up for a lot of big bands and in all kinds of genres because we were weird. We were just a weirdo band, <laughs> but we were so we were opening up for like pop punk bands and we were opening up for uh, you know like indie bands and we were opening up for bands like Tenacious D and bands like Cracker and ba like all these different. We just they say you know you want to open up for this band. We said yeah. We of just course. went and just went out there and did it. So we did that for a few years, um, and then we knew we had to kind of go out on our, on our own. So we just it, it, we just went on these insane tours, uh, you know, headlining of smaller clubs um, and seeing who our fans were. And you know, that was a great period because we, re you know, years just do the country, do the country, do the country, and just you know, we got to know everybody, and we got to go out there and, and see who was there and build our thing, and uh, you know. Did that, I mean, all the way up to pretty much 2016, wow. essentially. We were getting ready to, like, kind of do something else, you know, do another album, put another album out. Um, and then uh, the pandemic hit, obviously. Sure. Um, so we had all these songs, and, and uh, you know, but we weren't able to, to tour it. So kind of just figuring out now what to do. Awesome. I feel like that's, like, the best time because you could do whatever you want. Exactly. Yep. You had so many kind of, like, evolutions of the band, so... Um, exactly. So would you kind of classify Sound of Urchin as more like a DIY kind of like punk style band, even though you had this like major record label behind you? Like, we, that's the funny thing is because we were so kind of, we weren't experimental where we were like too out there for people. Right. Like one of our songs would be metal and the other song, you know, like just straight up metal. Another song would be kind of maybe hip hop or another song would be reggae. Another song, you know, would be like more punk, like, you know, maybe we'd mix it a little bit. But so we were always experimenting. Our first album that we did for RCA, um, every song was recorded separately so from start to finish we wanted to make it like a mixtape okay so we're like you know this is we grew up on the beastie boys and grew up on you know bands like that where you know they would put out sort of mixtape type albums and 
we were like this, you know, even the Beatles or the Stones or some of the biggest bands, Zeppelin, even their albums were kind of like mixtapey. Um, and so, but we, it started, you know, it started to become very cookie cutter out there. And so we, and the attention span got less and less. So we were very hard sell for RCA, <laughs> which is great. We didn't care. They loved us too. So they, we were kind of their, their crazy weirdo project. And, you know, it was actually amazing. They let us do what we wanted to do. Um, and, you know, we opened up for, we, we toured with Deep Purple and the Scorpions even. Wow. So we toured with these like rock dinosaurs, um, you know, uh, Ronnie James Dio. And oh so we God. toured with anybody. Our manager was in Twisted Sister. So like, you know, it, we like these crazy chameleons, but uh, it's just rock and roll, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's all rock and roll. There's no point in like trying to define the genre. It's all rock and right, roll. Right. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> if awesome. it rocks. Um, so... You did mention mention Tenacious D, so I mean I'm a huge Jack Black fan. So what was it like um, playing with them? Oh, it was great. We did a tour with them, uh, and then uh, this was on their their first album, so it was like a really great time. Um, and uh, you know, then we just we we had a blast. We didn't really know them. We didn't know them personally going into it, uh, but then we became pretty quick friends. And Jack Black would come up and sing every night with us. We'd do a Rush cover. Oh, my God. And he'd come up and sing. And, I mean, they were nuts. They were totally... It was such a blast to do that, uh, you know. And then they called me up, and I'd play drums for them in the studio. And, you know, we were hanging out for that good little period, you know. And then, I mean, yeah, then when Jack Black went back into the movies and everything else. But it was... a Yeah, it was such a blast. They were so pro and so funny. And, you know, they were... It, it, everything you would imagine them to be like off stage is just what they were okay great because i i hate when especially like with celebrities when people are like oh they're such like jerks or they're super like egotistical but like no. jack black was cool i mean yeah they were they were hilarious okay jack black would come and you know fart on us in our dressing of room course. and you know <laughs> completely <laughs> okay cool uh, it was a blast yeah awesome so this kind of all went down like late 90s, early 2000s into like the 2010s, right? So like fast forward to now, 2022, the kind of like music landscape is very different. There's yeah. streaming platforms. There's not really as many like physical copies of things being sold. So as a band that kind of came up in this like kind of transition period, how yeah. has like social media and streaming platforms like affected you as a musician and like your band as a whole? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because we got signed to a major label just as things were changing. Yeah. So we kind of got the last of the, you know, we didn't get much money from them because we were their weirdo project, which was great. <laughs> yeah. You know, because we saw them give a lot of money to other bands that just ended up never getting out there. Right. But um, so we got the last of, of that kind of experience and we're recording our first album and Napster is around. Oh my God, Napster. <laughs> And we're using it at the studio, yeah, yeah. going like, oh, cool. Oh, there's our song, you know, whatever. Like, you know, cool. Somebody else is, is this, you know. And I'm getting all these, like, we're just collecting all this music. And then it's like, oh, man, this isn't cool. Uh, this isn't the right thing to do, yeah. you know. Um, and it was inevitable. It was going there. People, CDs, you know, uh, all of the, the, the ability to, to, to get music without paying. For right. Well, like iPods iPods, hard drive of music. Exactly. It was inevitable somebody was going to do it. It's not Napster's fault. It's not anybody's fault. Streaming, it was all going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's kind of a bummer because you can, in the back in the day, everyone would like, you know, if you were like an indie rock, you'd be like, oh man, I'd give all my music out for free if I could. But the problem is, you can't really survive. People should know the value of a CD or, or, an, or an LP, you know, which they're starting. I mean, that, you know, fast forward to now, that's kind of the cool part of where we are now is that people are into, you know, vinyl yeah. and they're into supporting the bands. They understand this thing. So, you know, we put out a bunch of vinyl last year or the past few years, um, you know, uh, and even some CDs of like unreleased stuff or whatever. And having a fan base en enables us to get out to those people. And, you know, they want to keep the value. You, they can tape our shows or whatever, but, you know, it's always appreciated if you buy the actual, you know, the actual music. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, uh, 
because we got a, a nice jump start at the tail end, um, it was great and really allowed us to keep going. Like, you know, uh, we were signed to another label uh, in 2005, and then that enabled us to keep going, even though it was an indie label. And uh, so we were lucky in that way. So I don't know what I would do if I was starting out, like how we would, you know, how we would do this, you know? I think you just have to get really good at making TikToks. Yeah, I, I guess that's, that's it. it. It's, it's TikTok. Um, but I really like what you said about the vinyl. Um, I've been collecting vinyl since probably like 2006, maybe. That's like when I got my first one and I was like, this is super cool. But now it's like, yeah, I have all those CDs like, you know, in my phone on my streaming platforms. But I like having like the different variants or like, you know, special pressings of things. So it's kind of like not just about the music. It's kind of like the collectible aspect of it. It's a good mixture. It is a good mixture. I mean, I use the streaming services, you know, I'm always watching stuff. I'm always YouTubing yeah, and yeah. doing my, my deep dives on YouTube. And, you know, it's, it's pretty, that stuff's amazing. Also, you know, we get the, um, uh, the reports every week on how we're doing on Spotify, how we're doing on Apple Music and everything. And that's great to see because there's so many people that are getting turned on to the music and they're shazamming it. Like, where are you what shazamming? How, do you, yeah. how are you finding this? Yeah. That, that kind of thing is, you know, that's really, really good. Um, the, thi the, the thing that's weird is, was the drop-off in the 2000s of, you know, of that ability for everyone to kind of get together on stuff. Right, right. But, you know, now it's just, you know, Sound of Urchin has its little pocket over here, you know, and somebody else has it here. And, you know... I kind of do like the idea of, it, of that kind of like everyone coming together on some type of music. They can all sing this song. Oh, I know that song. I love that song, you know? Right. But um, no, but the streaming, again, it's, it's inevitable. We all use it. And it does let us get out to people that never, ever hear the stuff, you know? So speaking of which, your track is a part of Playbook. Yes. yes. So yeah, congrats on that. Super excited. And I feel yeah, like cool. that's kind of like going to be a rebirth for your band as well, because it might be like kind of getting out to like a younger audience or even a different audience than back in the early 2000s. So I don't know. I'm really excited to play your song. <laughs> um, and then I guess this might be kind of like an, an opportunity for people like look at your discography, like not just the song that we have in the game, but like, yeah, other records that you guys have worked on, other collabs, like the Tenacious D thing. I think like people are, are going to like kind of, go on stalker missions around the internet and be like, how have I not heard of this band? So Yeah, I'm really psyched about it. I think it's really cool too because it's like, you know, there's our song, there's our video, it's on a game now so people can actually play play the song or learn how to, you know, learn how to, to dig into the song and yeah, to dig into anything else, our whole history and, and say, whoa, there's so much. I mean, again, that is the cool part of where we're at right now. You know, I get turned on to a band and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'll be, you know, I'll be listening to that band for months straight, just seeing what's out there and what they, you know, oh, wow, they have this, they have that. And like, you know, oh, there's a whole world out there. So that, that's pretty cool. I mean, that is what, you know, punk rock is. Yeah, totally. You know, so it's a, a give and take, you know, yeah. but it, it's very cool. I think this, the game is really cool and I'm psyched to, to check it out and hoping that people dig into the song and, uh, and check out the rest of the, you know, the stuff we have. Yeah, I think they definitely will. Um, and then what have you been up to recently? Like, are you playing shows? Are you working on other projects? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I just, we haven't done an Urchin show since 2016. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, we had a little, like, Urchin duo thing that we did during the pandemic. Nice. Just me and my guitar player, B. Ill. B. Ill. B. Ill. Love it. B. Ill. <laughs> my guitar hero. And so, you know, that was the way we could do some shows without having to get the whole band together because now the band lives all over the place. Sure, sure. Um, and, you know, we're really psyched to get going again. And we did a lot during the pandemic. Like, we, re we released, like, a fan, a lot of fan-only, like, a subscription service oh, that's of unreleased fun. tunes. So we did that during the pandemic. And, you know, it'll be fun to, like, see where we're at now and get out on the road. I just played a show the other night. I uh, have... I play with Dave Dryowitz, who's from Ween. Nice. Uh, and we have a, a bass drums duo that's pretty like punk rock. It's loud. It's not like, you know, just Sounds <laughs> it's like not it. jazz. <laughs> yeah, it's not jazz. <laughs> kind of noise jazz. 
But um, we just played a show on Saturday, so, you know, it was great to get out there and play again. And, you know, yeah, so all the wean offshoots that I play in, you know, and keep that going on. But they, I, I'm psyched to get Urchin back, and uh, it'll be very soon. We just have to figure out, like, we got to release something, you know, whatever that is, and then kind of get out on that. Because it's, you know, it's just waiting for us. So, you know, now we know. Yeah. Everything's back. We're back. Oh, so. yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And get on TikTok, right? You got to start making those, uh, doing those I dances know. or something. We have a, yeah, we have a dead TikTok account for sure. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of your socials, keep it locked on Sound of Urchin on Instagram, at Sound of Urchin. Yeah. If you're more on the Facebook side of things, they're at the sound of urchin and their music is on all the streaming platforms apple music spotify also youtube make sure you guys check out the collab with tenacious d i checked that out and went down like a rabbit hole and tomato thank you so much again for Thanks. joining me it was so fun talking to you i feel like um everything like my early 2000s like life just came back and i'm like living for it so i hope to talk to you soon and i'm super excited to play your song and playbook Nice, thank you. All right, see ya.